Hi everybody, welcome back. I'm Harry Langdon. I'm a photographer that photographs a lot of celebrities. And today, especially by popular request, we're going to talk about Diana Ross and uh, special pictures that maybe nobody's ever seen before, be either kind of experimental or just something that were really edgy stuff. You know, as a photographer, we like to do things uh, that are unique and maybe kind of arouse something in the observer, especially there's so much competition amongst photographers and each one has got their own style. And my style is getting edgy pictures on people that are uh, real attention getters. And so I've been photographing Diane Ross and she left the Supremes and when they called to, to do a session with Diana, uh, I just kept the same feeling that they wanted just portraits on her. But I thought, well, let's do something special on Diana or to give them so, something unique at Motown Records. And so we started at the top and <laughs> did some really outrageous ideas that were photographically really unique. By the way, there was no, no such thing as Photoshop at this time in the 70s. It hadn't been invented yet. Uh, there was no cell phones, and so it was that far back. And so wh what we could do in the camera, though, is what was important. And there are things that we could do in front of the lens. Um, it's kind of an old-fashioned technique of putting various kind of glass uh, uh, objects, diffusers, and this is kind of a kaleidoscopic attachment. You, by the way, you can get these now on the internet if you look them up in popular photography magazine and all. So I thought this was really a neat shot on Diana. Also, we used a star filter in combination with a psychedelic lens. So I thought that was really a killer shot. And my staff and I just got a kick out of it because here we're photographing somebody this famous but doing experimental photographic things. So we never knew whether we're going to be in trouble with Motown or not, but at least I could uh, be satisfied we got some different shots on her. And so this is another experimental shot where we uh, just kept the camera on a tripod opened up the shutter in an absolutely black room, uh, devoid of any light, but we just had our strobes ready to go. And so what we did, we shifted the camera from one side with the tripod to the other side, to the other side, and each time we flashed the strobe off, click, and then click, flash, and then click, flash, and, uh, and she was moving all the time we were shooting. And so this took a lot of experimenting, by the way. And, you know, I kind of got to kill these experimenting with photo techniques with Diana Ross. But, you know, we're trying to go for album covers with her. And so we want to get stuff that was really different. And so we uh, used, I like using special backgrounds uh, at that time. These were, uh, big murals that we put up behind clients and they use a star filter. I thought she looked really kind of an enchanted look, you know, with the moon behind her and all. And so I think they like these shots, you know. When we do sessions for clients, such as Motown, we never get any feedback, you know. You guys did a good job, you did, did this kind of, okay. But it's our own satisfaction our meeting my staff and myself that we're getting sp really good shots and if nothing else they look at in our portfolios today now the shots are, are really good on the internet when we're doing shooting sessions so I thought this is a real pretty fashion shot on Diana she, she was a lovely woman that uh, was able to take on these poses and look real languid and lovely and it was just such a pleasure to photograph Diana in gowns and so on. Here's another one in motion. And were you shooting with strobe, by the way, so there was no blur. And so I thought this was beautiful because Diana 
would bring in perhaps seven or eight gallons with her. And so we uh, just go from each shot where maybe take 10 minutes to, to do these shots. We did them in color, by the way, as well as in black and white. Here's another one of these paste up backgrounds with a Peter Max um, painting in the back behind her. This Peter Max is an artist that was real popular at that time. This is really beautiful in color. And we've, uh, we have this in color as well. And so, but I thought in black and white, it looked really good. And it was a really a hot shot. And so we, we had done so many experimental studio sessions with Diana. And uh, Motown at that time thought, well, let's do something different on Diana. And so let's have Harry Langdon pick out a place in Los Angeles that was kind of like a, a forest atmosphere and do kind of a 30s look uh, on Diana, a, a period, let's say, look on Diana, uh, from, back from kind of like the old school, the, the blues school back in the, the 20s and 30s. So I think this is what they were after. And so they rented a car, um, the, a big Cadillac, they brought it over on a trailer and they dumped it off in Mandeville Canyon. <laughs> this is in Los Angeles. This is a real famous uh, foresty area and off Sunset Boulevard in Los Angeles. And so the lighting though was really beautiful outdoors. And so this, this is one of my favorite shots. And so let me show, the, show you the rest that we took in that location. Here's Diana with a car behind her, this big old Cadillac that I don't think they, I think the engine ran, but they didn't want to run it for fear that something could go wrong. It's a very, very valuable car. But she, these are clothes that Diana thought would be good for shooting on location. There's such a nice contrast, you know, for, um, for Diana and her gowns and looking glamorous out in the forest. And so this is one of my favorite shots with her with the, the fur. And there's some other ones here. This is a very pastoral scene with Diana out in the forest looking very enchanted looking. And I thought that had a really a beautiful look to it. And so these are all, I was the, the sole art director on these, by the way, which I am on most of my shooting sessions. So I kind of had to art direct these and, and give Diana Ross, uh, you know, kind of set the mood. And I think she went along with it. And I thought these were very, very successful shots for me as a photographer. Jumping pictures were always exciting, and we went through a period of having clients jumping in the studio, and now we had her jumping out in the forest. And here's Diana also back in the uh, back seat of the, the big old Cadillac, and uh, these bell bottoms were really happening when I did the session in the 70s. So. I, I got a kick out of just doing <laughs> some outrageous things with Diana. And so we didn't, we weren't afraid to take chances. And I think she liked taking chances also. And this is, talk about bell bottoms. These are really outrageous ones with her, with the Cadillac behind her. Uh, this is again, one of my favorite shots. It's got a great composition. And so, from these sessions, uh, shots that we did in the forest, they derived an album cover, which is kind of a 30s feeling of uh, 50 years of, is it 30 years? 50 years of Diana Ross. And so I, I felt kind of good about it. I had kind of a Billie Holiday look to it with the gardenia. Oh, and then right at the end, I couldn't resist getting up on top of the car with Diana, sitting on top of the Cadillac and getting a shot of us together. So that, that was the end of the ex, ex, exterior experimental pictures that we did. Uh, most of them you see here are experimental. And so we went back to doing, these are some shots that maybe nobody's seen before. This one I thought was really a hot shot. And so I thought I'd show it to you today. This is another double exposure 
uh, that was done in the camera, no um, Photoshop. And again, we shot in a dark room and Diana was, we told Diana, just keep moving and, and singing. And we shot her first with one clean exposure with a strobe uh, with her dancing. And then we moved the camera a little bit to one side and then uh, put a, a red gel on top of the main light source and did another exposure both on the same sheet of film <clears throat> and was a double exposure. These are hard to get, by the way. It's pure guesswork what, when to shoot the strobe off on this side, move the camera over here, and then shoot the strobe off with the gel. And this is a real successful one. I was quite happy with this. And so the, we went on to do some more kind of tricky shots on Diana. This is kind of a Carmen Miranda sort of a look with the, with the hat. And, uh, and so some of these had never been seen before. So I thought oh, you got a kick out of seeing some of these on Diana. And so these, uh, when you, after you uh, see this, these pictures on Diana, you might want to write comments to me when you uh, comments underneath the photos. This is uh, probably one of the last shots I did of Diana together uh, after she did some evening gown shots. And then some time went by. We did some other newer sessions, but those are unique kind of um, experimental shots. This is a, this one of these turned out to be an album cover, one of these experimental ones with the moonscape behind her. I think you probably have seen this album cover. Also, this one was again, a double exposure shot in the studio. By the way, these are 12 inch albums, which I guess they started to come back out with them, but we shot one two and a quarter, two and a quarter film. And so I saved these album covers. They're a little faded and a little, a little shabby, but they're still the originals. So this one, again, we left, shot in a dark room, a black room, put her up on top of a stool, and we had a tungsten light on behind her that kind of gave her an outline of, of her figure. And so we had the tungsten light on. We opened up the shutter and then we zoom the camera lens back so that there, there'd be a streak that surrounded her. And then, and then the one last exposure, bang, with a strobe, and which captured the, her clean image. And so this took a lot of experimenting. And I think we pulled it off pretty, pretty well because it ended up being an album cover. So if you want to write me and ask me more questions about how we did this, it wasn't done with Photoshop. It sure enough was done in the camera, which is a hard way to go. And I guess you guys have all seen the Biafra picture that we did. And so there's quite a story to this on another segment of my, uh, my shootings with Diana Ross. I'll explain this in more detail. And this is probably, for, uh, de this album covers derived from one of the first sessions I did with Diana, you know, with this kind of a spacey outfit on that she had. And I, I, it turned out to be a real nice album cover. So Diana was such a, a great inspiration, by the way, I'll use that term, because some of my clients, you know, they don't bring very much to the shooting session. They just come in and expect me to ask them to smile and look pretty and that's it. But Diana brought more than just that to the sessions and she would uh, expect, you know, just to do some experimental things. And so anyway, that's more about Diana Ross. Maybe I'll have another segment about her. But thank you very much for tuning in again, you guys. Make sure when you write your comments or thumbs up, uh, that I'll get back to you and write you a comment back to you. So thanks very much for tuning in, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.